Yalimudut all friends online, you all are welcome to today's session. Nuvin Sahiba has done beautiful zikr, alhamdulillah. Let me start with this dua on behalf of all of us. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Allahumma ja'alli nooran fi qalbi wa nooran fi sama'i wa nooran fi basri wa nooran fi lisani wa nooran fi sha'ri wa nooran fi bashri wa nooran fi lahmi wa nooran fi dami wa nooran fi izami wa nooran fi asabi wa nooran bayna yadaya Vanuram min khalfi, vanuran ay yamini, vanuran ay yasari, vanuram min fawqi, vanuram min tahti. O oh Allah, make for us a light in our heart, a light in our ears, a light in our eyes, a light in our tongue, a light in our hair, a light in our skin, a light in our flesh, a light in our blood. A light in our bones, a light in our nerves, a light from front of us, from behind, from right side, from left side, from above and below. Yamala, I say this dua from on behalf of all the friends online, Mola. Yamala, Yamushil Kusha, we seek your nur from all the directions, Mola. Yamala, we are very weak. We are very feeble, Mala. Ya Mushkil Kusha, Meherban Mala, Madat Parma, Madat Parma. Allahumma ja'alli nooran fi qalbi, wa nooran fi sama'i, wa nooran fi basari, wa nooran fi lisani, wa nooran fi sha'ri, wa nooran fi bashari. Wa nooran fi lahmi, wa nooran fi dami, wa nooran fi izami, wa nooran fi asabi. Vanuran bayna yadeya, vanuran min khalfi. Vanuran ay yamini, vanuran ay yasari, vanuran min fawqi, vanuran min tahti. The translation of this dua in Ur is, O oh Allah, make for me a light in my heart, a light in my ear, a light in my eyes, a light in my tongue, a light in my hair, a light in my skin. A light in my flesh, a light in my blood, a light in my bones, a light in my nerves, a light in front of me, a light from behind me, a light from right side, a light from left side, a light from above me, and a light from beneath me. Shukran lillah, walhamdulillah, shukran lillah, walhamdulillah. Hasbunallah, wa nimal wakil, wa nimal mula, wa nimal nasir. Hasbunallah, wa nimal wakil, wa nimal mula, wa nimal nasir. Hasbunallah, wa nimal wakil, wa nimal mula, wa nimal nasir. Hasbunallah, wa nimal wakil. Wanimal Mola, Wanimal Nasir, Hasbunala, Wanimal Waki, Wanimal Mola, Wanimal Nasir, Topi Tai, Himatiari, Topi Tai, Himatiari, Topi Tai, Himatiari, Topi Tai, Himatiari. Be the light in my tongue, Mawla, so I can speak and help these friends who have come online, Mawla. You know all my weaknesses, Mawla. Ya Mawla, this slave of yours is not worthy of anything, Mawla, not capable of anything. It's all due to your blessings, Mawla. O Mushkil Kusha, Meherban Mawla, Madat Parma, Madat Parma. Mushkil Kusha, Madat Parma. Shukran Lillah, Hiv Alhamdulillah. Shukran Lillah, Hiv Alhamdulillah. Once again, welcome to all friends online. We continue to study our book, What is Soul? 
Today we are going to do session five on chapter three. The first question we will talk about is about seeing of this world by disease. Those who have left us from this world, how do they see in this world? Remember that it all depends on the ranks. What rank that person was at when they left this world. Depending on their ranks, they will be in paradise or not in paradise. Every individual is given free will to see whatever they want during this lifetime, whatever path they want to choose. It says in Quran in chapter 50, verse 35, Meaning, there they will have whatever they wish. There they will have whatever they wish. And with us, there is yet more. So those mu'minin who is who are with Imam, those mu'minin who are with Imam because with their free will, they chose to be obedient, devoted to Mala, and fulfill all the conditions, then they will, their status will be something like this. That for them, whatever they wish, it will be given to them. They will have no limitation, but surely it depends on the rank. Those mominins who were elevated and they leave this world, surely they, with their spiritual eye, which is illuminated by divine light, in fact, during their lifetime in this world, they are able to, with their ibdai body, we have talked about ibdai body, the original body, the nurani badan, which is there, this physical body dies in this world, but the Nurani Badan, which is with Imam, a moment as Salik who is able to get to that level, will have that Ibdai body. And through that spiritual eyes, which is illuminated by the divine light, they are able to see anywhere they like. Now, very interestingly, you know, some people may think and they wonder in their heart that those family members who have left us, you know, our parents, whoever we have lost, can they from that side help us? In our heart, we always think that they are around us and they're watching over us, they're helping us. You know, we do have those kind of feelings in our heart if we have lost our loved ones. In reality, what happens, those who are one with Mola in that world, they would never interfere with the free will. The law of free will always exists. And as humans, we are, we are living while we have our breath. We have this power of making the choice. We decide what do we want. With our decision, our choice, our free will, we choose our life. And that is a blessing which is given to humans. Remember, we had talked about angels. They don't have free wills. For them, it is only to do ibadat and zikr. They don't have free will. They cannot be disobedient because they do not have free will. But as humans, we do have free will. So Allah or his mominees never ever interfere with the free will of mominees. However, those souls who are in this world and they continue to elevate themselves, surely they do have help from angels. Now, how do we know about that? How do we can believe, how can we believe and say that those pious mominees who choose to be obedient, who choose to be devoted, who choose to fulfill all the conditions, how do we know that angels do help them? Remember, what we are trying to discuss, we are clarifying in our head, sometimes when we feel that we got this, uh, 
miraculous help, Gaibana Madad. And we think, oh, probably, you know, my, my mother. We just have this feeling, oh, my mother came and helped me out. And we understand that those who have passed away, they do not interfere with our free will. However, those living in this world, if they continue to walk on the path of Sirat al-Mustaqeem, fulfilling all the conditions, they do have help of the angels. And Allah talks about it in Quran. Chapter 41, verse 31. It says, we are your protectors in this life and in the hereafter. Therein shall you have all that your souls shall desire. Therein shall you have all that you ask for. So those who work hard and do zikr ibadat ilm amal with giriya uzari, they not only have angels in that life, but here too. In both the worlds, angels are assigned to them. They are their friends and they continue to help them. So those who feel that they get this miraculous help in their life and they don't understand how, something seemed so impossible, but it worked out very miraculously. Of course, these angels are there to help us out. But remember that all these help they provide, it's not physical help. Remember that it is always spiritual. Even if something happens in our physical life, it is to help us get into the path of spirituality, push us to think more about spirituality. Because the higher purpose of a human is to elevate ourselves in spirituality. This physical life, whatever we do in physical life, it is not going to last. So the angels are not going to help in something which is temporary, which is going to die. They would want us to elevate spiritually. So their help is always actually in relationship to our spirituality, our religion, related to knowledge. And it is never ever related to worldly things. Now, someone, when someone can say that we do see miracles in our worldly life. Sure, you do. All pe many people do. But the purpose, the intention is to increase the level of certainty in our heart that he does help. So we see more and more spirituality. So the aim, the purpose, the objective is always to elevate us in spirituality. Now, the next question was about nourishment. In Quran, there's a chapter, Surah 5, verse 66, talks about nourishment. And this verse reads as, if they had observed the Torah and the gospel and that which was revealed unto them from their Lord, they would surely have been nourished from above them and from beneath their feet. Among them, there are people who are moderate, but many of them are of evil conduct. Now, the question is that this nourishment which Allah talks about, what kind of nourishment is this? Does this mean that those who follow the teachings are devoted? Will they be rich in this world? Or those who are disobedient, they'll go hungry? No, this is not talking about physical nourishment. It is only to do with the spiritual nourishment. Physical food is for physical world, which is temporary. The tawil is spiritual food. Humans have many examples of nourishment. Let's take an example of a tree. Tree is an example of a vegetative soul. Tree gets its nourishment from its root, let's say from its feet, and through branches too. Through branches because they have fruit or the sunlight is being absorbed, the nourishment reaches to the tree. So tree is an example of vegetative soul because we do get vegetables or fruit from that. And that becomes vegetative soul for a human body. 
But at a higher stages, there are heavenly souls which do bring for us nourishment of a higher level, spiritual nourishment. And when we talk of a nourishment which is of higher level, they come through our head from above me and beneath me. So if it is the food which is of a higher level, it enters our body through our head. Whereas the earthly souls, vegetative souls, lower level souls do enter in our body through our feet. So when we talk of vegetative soul, actually what we are saying, it is the soul to give us the strength, the physical strength. Remember the physical energy, which is temporary. So those souls do enter our body through our feet. Now, in comparison to vegetative soul, animal soul is higher. Human soul is higher than that. And Holy Spirit is higher than that. But in a human being, in an ordinary human being, animal soul and human soul do enter through his or her head. However, there is another kind of nourishment which is called subtle nourishment. Subtle nourishment is also of two kinds. One enters through our throat. It is not chewed. Remember, it's subtle. So how would you chew it? It's not physical. But we swallow it. It enters through our throat. It's subtle. Extremely small, minute particles. And it cannot be animal soul because if it is animal soul, it has to be chewed. So it is a higher level soul, but it enters through our mouth, through our throat, we swallow. And then there are souls which enter through our nose too in the form of fragrances. All these are higher level experiences in Ibadat, in spiritual elevation. All these souls entering our body can be witnessed in different ways. So these are few examples taken from this verse which we are talking about, chapter 5, verse 66, that they are given fruit, nourishment from above them and below them. So these are these were few examples which we talked about. Vegetative soul, animal soul, human soul, as well as subtle souls in the form of fragrances entering into our body, giving us what? Spiritual nourishment. Because we all know about the physical nourishment. We are not concerned here about physical nourishment, but our spiritual nourishment. Then there is a, okay, so I already spoke about it, nourishment of soul. When our soul is nourished, it enters. How does it enter? We talked about two ways. One is from our throat and one is through our nose. It is subtle. We can feel it. We cannot see it. But yes, through our inner eyes, through our inner heart, we become aware when we are at that level that these souls are entering our body. They are subtle. We don't need to chew it. We may not be able to see it physically, with physical eyes, but with inner eyes, we're able to see it and realize that it's entering our body, entering our being, strengthening our spirit, giving us more light within our being. Manifestation of soul. So when we talk of this nourishment, then also we talk of manifestations. Souls have many forms, it seems like. There are so many manifestations. How does that happen? Now, when we ask this question, like, how can it happen? It doesn't, you know, it, it's right now a concept which is very strange to us because we have not experienced. So we are talking about it based on the knowledge. So when we talk of knowledge, it, there is a question in our heart. How does it happen? So I'm going to give you a verse which is actually opposite of what we are talking about. Sometimes learning is easier through learning of opposites. Surah Bakra, verse 18 says, Summun bukmun umyun fahum layer jaun. Deaf, dumb, and blind. They will not come back. Allah actually talks about people being deaf, dumb, and blind. Now, in the whole universe, we see people, not all of them are deaf, dumb, or blind. If majority is ignorant, 
That means majority should be deaf, dumb, and blind, but that's not the reality. Physically, people are not deaf, dumb, or blind. In the spiritual context, Allah says that their heart are blind. Their inner ears are closed, they're deaf, they cannot talk. They're deaf, dumb, and blind, meaning spiritual senses are like dead, they are not there. So when we ask this question, how does this manifestation of soul happens? It does happen for those who are able to see, able to hear, whose botany senses are awakened, their inner eyes are open, the heart of the eyes are open, is able to see things through the luminous form. And of course, these lights, these sensations are silent, but they are in moving pictures. Moving pictures, what does that mean? Let's take an example of our television or theater or whatever, where we see people, but they are not people actually. It's the moving pictures. The people are sitting in different countries, different places, and they don't even know that we are watching them right now through this camera, doing something very different than what they are currently doing. So that is a physical example for us to realize that the re in reality, the people are somewhere else, but we see this light, physical light, showing us these moving pictures of people. They are talking, they are moving, but in reality, they are not there. Similarly, when a moment elevates in spirituality, when the eyes of heart is opened up, there is nuranian, luminosity in their heart. It's all silent, but they are able to see it as they are moving pictures. So what are we saying actually? This can happen during sleep in the form of dreams. It can happen also while moment is awake in the form of vision. So manifestation of soul actually happens due to mercy of Mola. It is only his mercy that after some time when a moment is salik continues to walk on this path to learn the true knowledge, continue to do zikro ibadat, ilmo amal with giri azari, slowly, gradually, the doors to spirituality starts opening up. Let's take the example of Zikari and Maryam that will help us to understand. Maryam being the student of Zikariya, very young in age, 16, 14, somewhere. She was given this mayazam and she was very pious, she would fast, she would do zikr whole night, talk less, eat less, sleep less. She followed that principle, that rule. One day when Zikariya visits her in Khanika, she had a room upstairs in that Khanika, meaning Masjid or Jamaat Khana at that time. And Zikariya, being the prophet at that time, he sees her sitting in her room with a bowl of fruit. Now these fruit were not of that season. So they were out of season fruit. And Zikariya gets very surprised. He says, Maryam, how come you have these fruit here? They are not even in the seasons. And she says, it's all due to mercy of my Mola. It's all due to mercy of my Lord. What does this mean here? Meaning when a mu'min is able to walk on this path, meeting all the requirements, the door of spirituality opens up. The perfect manifestation, perfect manifestation is of Imam. It starts to appear in the heart of a mu'min is salik in the form of subtle particles with voice or without voice, in names and words, in voice, in sounds, subtle images, dreams, imagination, wakefulness, you name it, all these miracles are start happening. And that's what Zikariya sees actually. The badni meaning of this fruit was 
that she knew higher level of secrets, realities and recognition. She knew much more than her physical age. And Zikariah gets surprised and asks her, how come you have this? And she says, it's all mercy of my Lord. Meaning, he was a prophet and she was a student, she was young. But due to her fulfillment of the requirements, the conditions, Mola is a merciful Mola. He gives it to everyone and anyone who meets the condition. And that's what was happening to Maria. So here, when we are talking about manifestation of soul, it is to do with his mercy. When a complete door of spirituality opens, the perfect manifestation of Imam becomes Zahur, becomes evident for Momine Saleh. We know physically he has Imam. He is a perfect man, he is a perfect manifestation of Lord in this time. But do we know really the Bhatini manifestation of Imam? Do we recognize him all the way? That happens when we are able to see the manifestation of soul when we are fulfilling all the conditions. I think I already spoke about the next slide too. So what is the purpose of manifestation of soul? Purpose is we know it. To recognize, to become one, to attain that. So how should we do it? What should we do it? We all know that. The supreme purpose, the main purpose, the highest purpose is to be able to identify the spiritual manifestation, which is through knowledge and recognition. Through knowledge and recognition. So how, how are we able to get that? How are we able to get that? It needs two conditions are needed to attain it. Knowledge of certainty and good deeds. The more we seek knowledge, the knowledge of certainty, until we don't complete this stage, this level, we don't have knowledge of certainty, the next level of certainty cannot come. It is one step after the other step. In order to get to the second step, we do need to have knowledge of certainty. When we say knowledge of certainty, meaning that there is no, a hair cannot be there of a doubt. Hair so thin, so minute. Even if there is a doubt like a hair, it is not certain. Certainty of knowledge means no doubt at all. No darkness at all. Complete peace. Complete certainty. When we have that level of knowledge, then only we can elevate ourselves to the second level, which is eye of certainty. And that's all we seek because we want to see all these beautiful manifestations of Imam. It cannot happen until we have this certainty of knowledge. And surely the deeds have to be good. Now, there is a lot of uh, area um, in deeds. Why do I say that? Because in deeds also there are ranks. Let me give you a very simple example. We can work hard to feed children who are hungry. Who are hungry, they need it. We can, give, we can choose to give food to a child or anybody. If we feed somebody for the next meal, they are again hungry. And that's why there is a proverb in Chinese that don't give a man fish to eat, but teach him how to fish. Referring to that, we can go further higher that one can help someone by giving physical help. The second level would be spiritual help. And the highest level would be intellectual help. All good deeds. They all are good deeds. But even within the deeds too, there are hierarchy, there are ranks. 
So with time, with energy, with knowledge, we continue to learn how to smartly be doing good deeds. We do need to be smart. I do say that. And the reason is, for example, one person can sit down and do zikr for two hours, four hours. A person who works full time, has family, needs to take care of children, how that person is able to take out time, two hours to do zikr, like nawafil, more than like on top of the ibadat time and dua time, how can you do that? That person does not have that luxury of sitting down and doing zikr for two hours. They want to, but they can't because it's just impossible. How did Mola tell us to do zikr? Keep a tasbih with you and take the name wherever you are. In a fraction of a second, even if you remember, take Mola's name. So this person now becomes smart and sets the intention, Ya Mola, the whole day when I work, help me remember you all the time. Accept my all breaths in your remembrance. Now, this person is working same as yesterday, but today's day is very elevated. How? Because the intention was to remember him all the time. So intention made all the difference. That's how we do need to understand that the deeds have to be purified. It's all about our intention and thoughts. Very interestingly, people do ask these questions too. Transference of light. For example, how did Prophet Muhammad transfer the light to Mawla Ali? I hope by now, all the friends online, they do know that the Prophet is Natik, whose rank is higher than the Imam. Prophet, whose rank is Natik, his rank is higher than Asas and Imam. So the Prophet cannot have gotten the Isma Azam from Mawla Ali. Mawla Ali must have gotten the Isma Azam from Prophet Muhammad because Prophet Muhammad was Natik. Though same Nur, but different manifestation, different function. So how did the Nur transfer from Prophet Muhammad to Mawla Ali? Through word, through Kalima, through Isma Azam. Now the word Kalima in Urdu has four letters. Ta, Lam, Meem, Ha. These four letters allude to four different things. And these four different things include, I'm going to start from below and then go up. First, the teaching, the talimat is being given to the vasi, to the legatee. Whoever is the nur transferred to, talimat is given. And with talimat, when the time is right, supreme name, which is isme azam, is given. Isme Azam is like a spirit, like a soul, which is breathed into the Vasi. And then surely comes the command. But in reality, the essence of how the Noor is transferred, it's through Isme Azam, the Kalima. Now, let's review this verse, chapter 66, verse 12 in which Allah actually talks about how the soul or spirit was breathed into Maryam. But I would like to draw your attention to translation because we all are trying to study Quran and picking up Quran and understanding, reading the verses which we are doing in the class. So I wanted to draw your attention. Let us just read this. And we never read the brackets in the translation. Why? because they, the translator is putting their own thoughts. And now look at these three translators. So the first one is Shahi International. He says, and the example of Mary, the daughter of Imran who guarded her chastity, so we blew into her garment through our angel. 
and she believed in the words of her Lord and his scriptures and was a the devoutly obedient. Now, because they don't understand the Taweel, we just discussed the Taweel that the Isma Azam is given. And the example of this Isma Azam being given is the way exactly how we got Isma Azam during that Jubilee. Most of us are here who have Isma Azam, and Mola comes, gives Didar, Darba, and gives Isma Azam. So when Mola gives Isma Azam, he is speaking the kalima, the word, and it goes to our ears and enters our being, the nur enters, the Ismayazam. And exactly this verse is talking about how Maryam, the daughter of Imran, had received this Ismayazam. But look at the way it's been translated. And the example of Mary in her garment, how the kalima was put into her garment does not make sense. Let's read Pictel. Pictel is an individual who studied Quran, and when he studied Quran, he became Muslim, and he translated uh, Quran too. So Pictel says, and Mary, daughter of Imran, whose body was chaste, chastity, therefore we breathed therein something of our spirit, and she put faith in the words of her Lord and his scriptures and was of the obedient. There is no brackets. And it says that Mary, who is daughter of Imran, she was pious. A soul, her spirit was breathed to her and she had faith in the words, in the kalimat of the Lord, his scriptures, and she was obedient. Then look at Yusuf Ali. Yusuf Ali says, and Mary, the daughter of Imran, who guarded her chastity and we breathed into her body, of our spirit and she testified to the truth of words of our Lord and his revelations and was one of the devout servants. Now we all know how Mary is seen, Maryam is seen. In Ismaili Talimat, we do know that Maryam had a husband and through whom she has the child, Hazrat Isa Alaihissalam. But because people don't know that, the Talimat is not there, so they think of garment, they think of her body, like they say things which does not make sense logically. Every human who is in this world has to be born from her mother's womb. This is the law of Allah. Allah's sunnat does not change. Allah's habit does not change. She was her husband's name was Yusuf bin Nijar. Yusuf bin Nijar, who was carpenter. In fact, it, he was her cousin, and he used to work with Zikaria and her father, Imran. And she was married to him, and how, that's how she had Hazrat Isa. So this was just a side story for you to understand when you read the translation, do not read the brackets. So here, what we were talking about was transference of light. The light is transferred through kalima, through word, through isme azam. Surely, when we studied the word kalima, we do realize that isme azam, if we were to not understand the importance of teachings, learning the command of Allah, it's difficult to get. Now here, when we are applying to ourselves as Mominee, what command we are talking about? The mercy, the command of Mola that you can be one with me. Because we all seek to be one with Imam, Fana fil Imam, Mutu Kabla Anta Mutu. We are not capable. We are not that strong that we can kill our carnal soul. It is only and only through his mercy and his command. He sees our devotion, our hard work, and he blesses us. We continue to work hard. Results are always in his hands because he is merciful Mola. We never become proud or say we did this or we did that because that's taking us to the wrong path. So in this verse, we are talking about the example of Maryam who received her kalima. It was breathed to her, meaning that it was told to her and she heard 
and then she elevated herself through her ilmo amal zikr ibadat and reached to that status where she was herself a pagamber she was a prophet based on quranic talimat chapter 4 verse 171 it says o people of the book o people of the book commit no excesses in your religion nor say al of allah ought but the truth jesus the son of mary was a messenger of allah and his word which he bestowed on mary and a spirit proceeding from him so believe in allah and his messenger so believe in allah and his messenger and if you were to study the whole verse it actually talks about trinity that don't talk of three the way you know christians believe that jesus is the son of god and then mary and then allah so there are three trinity allah says very clearly in quran that he it's the oneness of the god the talimat of islam is the oneness of the god he does not have a son he does not have children so in this verse who is being called upon o oh, people of the book o oh, people of the book meaning christians muslims those who have books given to them and they follow the sharia of the book o oh, people of the book commit no excesses in your religion do not be called crossing the boundaries stay in your limits do not say other than the truth and the truth is that isa was the son of mary who was a messenger of allah and his word his word meaning the word isa which was bestowed on mary in a spirit proceeding from him now this is a higher level concept but i'll i'll briefly mention because we are talking about it maryam being so pious and so devoted she in her ibadat actually had achieved such a higher status that she had taken her son who was not even born to a higher level that is why isa when he was born at that time even quran talks about it that he used to speak of course there are spiritual miracles within it it's not physical speech but there are there is much more to the story of isa in which allah is talking about that it was maryam who worked very hard and his word was actually bestowed to maryam inshallah with time we will be able to understand the essence the key point here we are learning we are from this book is that the transference of light happens through word through kalima through ism e azam the supreme name every imam also transfers his light to his successor in the same way and there are two terms we should learn imam e lahaq and imam e sabiq the successor the upcoming imam is called the imam e lahaq and the imam of the past time is called imam e sabiq every imam transfers his light to successor in the same way meaning everybody every child of imam also has a isme azam but that isme azam has noor e paa meaning a a light which is which is which works in abundance and it it goes in very very high speed noor e faa so transference of light is the same concept if you were to take the example of natik and asas imams and even mominis because his laws does not change he keeps it same now which characteristics belong to which soul people get curious and they ask which characteristics belong to which soul so the answer is very simple study the characteristics now let us study three tree would be an example of vegetative soul does a tree walk no but it grows 
So when we see a growth in a child, it is due to vegetative soul. But a child walks too. Who walks? Animal walks. So animal soul is seen while child is walking, humans are walking. So we are matching the characteristics. Animals only have instincts. When a child is young, he will throw temper tantrum, be getting angry, throwing stuff. He cannot distinguish between right and wrong. There is no voluntary mechanism to control anything in his body. What child wants, child wants it. There is no other way about it. But a grown up man or a person would know to control. It cannot be instincts based all the time. Does not mean that this person does not have animal instincts. Adults do get angry, but they don't take it out on people. Adults do get hungry, but they don't start crying or yelling. They need food, food, food. They will have to wait for the right time to eat food. So those are rational soul characteristics. So very simple answer. If we get interested, what characteristics belong to which soul, we'll have to study tree, animal, and human and put in the right section and we'll be able to find out which characteristics belong to which kind of soul. Now, just food for thought, there are humans who are very peaceful. Most humans are always in rush, anxiety, worries, majority of them. But there are few mominins, few humans we see very calm, very peaceful. They have something more than just ordinary human beings. Let's take example of our peers. Our peers were different individuals. So what did they do is different? What was different in them? If they also had human souls like us, then what was different? We all know the answer. They did go through this Majiza of Mutu Kabla Antamutu. During their lifetime, they become, became one with Imam. Therefore, they had the Holy Spirit too with them, which is the higher soul than the rational soul or human soul. Having that soul within them, their habits, their personalities, their way of doing things change than other human beings. And that's how we were able to see that there is something different in these people. So Alhamdulillah, these were a few questions. There are still questions remaining from chapter three. Inshallah, we'll try and finish in the next class. If friends have any question, please go ahead. So I see this question, what is the source of this prophet's Natik? Rank is higher in, there are very many books actually. Ranks are mentioned by Pir Nasir Khusro, Kazi Noman, Ranks are mentioned in very many books, almost all the dyes, you'll have to study to see. And um, uh, Imam is eight, seven, eight, nine, ten is Natik. So Natik is higher than the Asas and the Imam. So if you go from the bottom to top, so we say we are Mustajib because we are learning, we are growing, we are studying. Mustajib, after Mustajib, there is Mazun, like a missionary. Mazun. Mazun e Mahdud, Mazun e Mutalib. Mazun with limited ism, limited permission because he's under training. And then Mazun e Mutalib, um, who has broader ism, still a missionary. Then comes the Dai e Mahdud, again, Dai, who is the teacher of Mazun, but he still has limited understanding as compared to Maz Dai e Mutalib, who is higher than Dai e Mahdud. And after that comes Huchya, like our peers. And above that comes Ba. And above Ba comes Imam, Asas, and Natik, Nafsekul, and Aklikul. So these are the hierarchy in our tariqa, hierarchy of our religion. Every seventh Imam is Natik? No. So Natik um, can be Imam. How do I say that? In the example of Ibrahim, Quran talks about Ibrahim uh, calling him Imam, that you are the 
imam of the whole nation. So he was a nati and he was also made an imam. But if we were to go further, Hazrat Ibrahim had two sons, right? Ismail and Ishaq, Ismail and Isaac. Ismail became the Asas Imam. He was the Lahak Imam of Hazrat Ibrahim. And through Ismail, the Imamat continued. But Ishaq is the one who gets the prophethood because Ibrahim was prophet, Natik. He was a major prophet, so Natik as well as Imam. Imam continues through Ismail, whereas prophethood continues to Ishaq. And if we talk of Dawood, Suleiman, all of them, uh, Yusuf, Yaqub, they all come from the progeny of Ishaq. So Natiks are only seven, remember that. Major prophets are only seven. Natik is the term the Urdu translation of major prophet. Natiks always have their shariat. They do have their books too. You are right. Miyamatapa, you said that disease member go to paradise according to their ranks. And if the person don't have that good rank, where does he go? As a smiley, we don't believe in hell. So mm -hmm. where does that Ruhani goes? They are also in paradise, but paradise also has ranks. So depending on their status, their place in the paradise, they have this fulfillment of their desires. So if you want to know more, what I can tell Naveen Saiba to share with you the lectures on Jannat and those up, and that will help you get this understanding. Okay, surely, thank you. Surely I agree with you that being smiley, we all are in paradise. So as I see, as we are saying, isn't hell and paradise on earth itself? Yes and no. Because if we say only yes there, that means there is no existence of hereafter. A person who lives in this world and does all the good deeds, and this other person who is partying all the time, sleeps during Ibadat time, doesn't care about anybody, just is only taking care of himself, doesn't do anything good, it would be unjust to go to the hereafter and get the same status because they were smileys. So having said that, there is ranking in hereafter too. So if you have not heard uh, lectures as we uh, on Jannat and Dozak, I would request you to ask Naveen Saiba to get those lectures. It would really help you understand it. Okay, this is a good question, not related, but okay. So if Natik's status is higher, why do we need Imam? Natik's status is higher, why do we need Imam? Natik was Okay, so let's take example of personality. Prophet Muhammad is a Natik. He was Natik during his time. Today, it's not the time of Prophet Muhammad. In fact, his cycle has ended. The time of Qiyamah has started as per the Farman of Imam Sultan Muhammad. Shah Allah, Muhammad, wa so if it is not his time, according to the rule given in Quran that every nation will have their guide with them. Today, we need our guide, we need our Imam. So it does not matter, like it, it does not relate to the status of Natik or Imam. It relates to us needing the guide all the time. Current time is time of Imamat. It's not the time of Prophet. I hope I've answered your question, Salma. I have a question. G. Okay, I'm like I'm. I'm seeing that many people are having this question about why is not, you know, how is Natik higher than the Imam? So yeah, I, I am having a confusion in that too. I mean, I understand you said that there are ranks. You know, many books are about that. So, I mean, but I don't know. It's not sitting well with me either. And then I'm thinking, I'm just trying to think, and I'm saying it at Mirage time, uh, 
uh, Prophet Muhammad, when he had the mirage, when he reached the seventh heaven, he met Hazrat Ali. So Absolutely. that was like, so that was like the the top, right? So mm -hmm. then if he met Hazrat Ali, so then, and that's when he had the mirage. So mm -hmm. then how is he higher than the Imam? Beautiful question. So this tells us that we do need to have recognition of Imam. The way we understand, we are taking two people, okay, Mola Ali and Prophet Muhammad, and we think we should be able to get all the answers. But in reality, I mentioned Imam Assas, I mentioned Imam, Imam there's Imam Mukim. Depending on the functions, manifestations are different. Now, this is difficult because we, if we don't have the knowledge, we don't have the basis, how do we stand on it? So how do I make it very simple for you? Very simply put, Imam has always been there. The problem starts when we think that Mola Ali is the first Imam and Imamat started from Mola Ali, meaning Prophet Muhammad used to go to Karihira to do his ibadah. Now, who gave him Ismail Azam and Mola Ali was not even born? That was Hazrat Matali, right? Sorry? There was uh, the Imam before Imam Hazrat Ali was Hazrat Matali, Imam Hazrat Ali's uh, father. Father, yes. yes. Good. So, if you understand that Hazrat Ali's father was there, then Hazrat Ali's father, Hazrat Abu Talib, whose name was Imran, Hazrat Imran, Maulana Imran, he gave the isme azam to the Prophet. And Prophet actually gave isme azam to Maula Ali. So Imam is higher than the Prophet. But which Imam? Maula Ali or Maulana Abu Talib? Okay. I think okay. I'm getting where you are going. Okay. okay. The Noor in Abu Talib and Mola Ali, it is same. Noor is same. Functions are different. We get into trouble when we mix it all without having this under basic understanding. So yes, you are not wrong. I said you are absolutely correct. But there is knowledge gap there. Until we don't fix that knowledge gaps, we will not be able to understand the full scenario. That's why. What happens when this comment I hear, right? It's not sitting well with you. Surely it will not sit well with you because there's a knowledge gap. We mistakenly, very humbly I say, we mistakenly think the rank of Natik is lower than the Imam. If we just were to say Imam, we are in trouble because Imam's rank is below Natik. But if you were to say the rank of Maulana Abu Talib, then I would say you're absolutely correct. We need to be on this journey. We need to be working hard to learn, to get all the concept assimilated in our mind and heart. Then the whole picture will become clear to us. Yes, it was Hazrat Ali, not Abu Talib. So what you are doing, again, you're putting the Noor in the body. Maulana Ali, Hazrat Abu Talib. Think of Noor. When you think of Noor, it does not matter if you see the Didar of Mawla Ali, Imam Sultan Muhammad Shah, Mawla Bakir alayhi salam, Mawla Nizar alayhi salam, Imam is Imam. Remember in this cycle, Mawla Ali is the Asas Imam. For us in this cycle to understand that, to realize the importance of the Asas of this cycle, Everywhere we see is Ali. But this Ali, there is more to this what we understand. We need to continue to learn more. You are welcome to learn more. Continue to stay on this path. Continue to ask these beautiful questions. Inshallah, we'll get there. Bit by bit. Any other questions? So this is actually a question related to Imam Shinasi. We've gone into different directions. But it's good, it's not a, it's a very good thing. Shukha alhamdulillah. Any other questions, friend? I hope that now it's becoming easier when I talk about this book. Are we getting it? Yes, we are. 
फाइनली यार लिमा कर जी फरजाना आ मुझे पूछना था लाइक मतलब मुझे भी ये कंफ्यूजन हमेशा था कि इमाम आठवें नंबर पर है फिर नातिक और असास तो नातिक के बारे में मौला अली ने बोला है ना कि मैं ना बोलता कुरान हूँ लाइक ये हिमसेल्फ से सी नातिक मौला अली क्योंकि इमाम से बढ़कर तो कोई नहीं है फिर उसके बाद नफसे कुल और अकले कुल तो नफसे कुल तो मतलब वो मौला ही हुआ ना खुदा हुआ यूनिवर्सल सोल जी तो वो मतलब देखा जाए तो एक ही सब रूह है अब वो दर्जा तो जब जब लाश होते होते इमाम के रूप में आए फिजिकल रूप में फॉर्म में आए जी जी बिल्कुल सही बोल रहे हैं तो फिर इतने सारे दर्जात दिए हैं आपसे कुल अकले कुल हाँ इसलिए दिए हैं कि हम दिमाग की वर्जिश अच्छा वर्जिश के लिए इट्स ऑल फॉर आर फूड फॉर आर ब्रेन highest level of fruits are at the level of intellect so it's to exercise our intellect and gain the fruits at that level mm. alhamdulillah inshallah so aap bilkul sahi bol rahe hain farzana imam hai tamam role tamam ranks encompassed here you are absolutely right neamat ji uh i'm very old and now when i sit in bangi i have aches and pains and i cannot concentrate is there any tasbih i can say before bangi so it helps me to concentrate sorry to ask you no no it's okay no if you have a question you will ask right so that's okay number 1 my dearest my sweetest sister you are not old age is just a number look at imams farman imam says you are never too old yes if you are saying you are having aches and pains it's hard to concentrate yes i can answer that but you are not old because imam says we are not old so we are not old if you are not able to concentrate or if you have aches and pains and you are seeking molas help for strength the simple tasbih which we do in the beginning of the class because i in front of you clearly seek strength from mola asking tawfiq taid himmat yaar but the key with ibadat is actually giriya usari before sitting in ibadat if you can do giriya usari what you just told me if you can tell it to mola call mola because he listens he is everywhere just talk to mola in talk do your giriya usari and tell him all your limitations all your difficulties and all your desires shed some tears and whatever comes to your heart any zikr any ginan words i like to sing because singing touches my heart so whatever comes easy to us you you do that and do giriya usari if you specifically want to pick up tasbih i just mentioned taufik taid himmat yari kazi ul hajat namat ya ali mushkil khusha is a beautiful mushkil asan ji tasbih it should be taken out for 40 days so if you feel that that's a big mushkil for you you can do that too but if you were to do it with giriya usari that will help you a lot right the giriya usari tasbih okay giriya usari is not a tasbih giriya usari means to shed tears you do zikr with shedding tears so doing zikr with giriya usari All right. Thank you. Thank you. Yali Madad. Yali Madad. Any anyone else has any other questions? I hope to see you all tomorrow, Inshallah. Yali Madad. Yali Madad. Yali Madad. Bye. Yali Madad. Yali Madad.